Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Breeze. Breezeway Productions presents The Breeze. And we are continuing our Slam Dance Film Festival coverage with a, uh, another amazing filmmaker here that was an official selection of the film festival with his project, A Tiny Ripple of Hope. From Chicago, Jason Polavoy. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. For sure. Thanks for coming on the show. Tell mm -hmm. us a, uh, a little bit about A Tiny Ripple of Hope. Yeah, so this is a, a feature documentary that um, I made with uh, with my two partners, Teddy Wackles and Nick Jenkins. Um, we shot it over the course of about four years, about 150 hours worth of footage. Um, and uh, primarily it covers a, a year or so in the life of um, an activist here in Chicago named Jamal Cole and his organization, My Block, My Hood, My City, some of the teens that are involved in that organization. Uh, it was a pretty tumultuous year for Jamal, a lot of highs, a lot of lows, um, and, uh, and we're really proud of the story it tells and the message, and, and uh, it feels really important right now. Right on. Well, I, four years, that's a, a lot of coverage. I'm sure that you had a lot of documentation to, to go through. How did you end up putting all of the pieces together to make the, the documentary and say, this is final, this is how it will be, and not like, you know, have that uh, anxiety of saying, what if there's more stuff that I can use that kind of thing? Yeah. Well, there was always that feeling. There was always the feeling of like, should we be filming more, especially as, um, you know, the world kind of turned on its head in 2020, Jamal was really visible in the protests here in Chicago after the George Floyd murder. And he's, he's a visible leader, uh, in Chicago's COVID response. Um, but what we really liked about, our edit is we decided to focus on one year um, because it felt like Jamal's superhero origin story. Um, it was all the trials and tribulations uh, that he went through in that one year to get his organization off the ground, to help the kids uh, in his program. Um, you know, he's at a much better place now than he was when we initially filmed. Um, but you know, the film feels important because it shows you the roadmap. It, it shows you everything um, that he went through to get to this point. Um, you know, whether that was um, his home going into foreclosure because uh, he was using his mortgage payment to, to fund the program or, um, you know, the dissolution of his marriage because, you know, his, his wife was not comfortable with the decisions he was making and, and, you know, being involved in a drive-by shooting because he's putting himself in situations that are not always the safest. It's, yeah. um, it's, it's, uh, it felt like a, a, a year, uh, a, for him felt like a, a, a lifetime's worth of experience for everyone else. How did you two end up linking up and then having that level of relationship where he trusted you to make a documentary about this subject since the subject is definitely his life and his, his baby. I mean, he, it's, it's uh, really matured over the years that you were shooting it. How did that relationship begin? Yeah, so I was a supporter of My Block, My Hood, My City before any of this even happened. Um, you know, his mission of... Uh, interconnectivity and and making change on the block level, I think is is the is what will ultimately work for Chicago. Mm -hmm. I think um, you know you can't wait necessarily for the city government or the state government or the federal government to fix your neighborhood. You got to do it yourself. Yeah. Um, and so in a lot of cases, that means, you know, meeting your neighbors and caring about the people in the city and, and cleaning up uh, your neighborhood or shoveling snow for seniors or um, planting an urban garden where the food gets donated to a food bank. It's all small things, but it's very tangible. Um, and so I started as a volunteer for the organization and, and I wanted to find some way to give more to them. Um, without writing a check, because quite frankly, I couldn't. Um, <laughs> I didn't have any money. So I, I, uh, have, I had a show in Chicago here on WGN for three and a half years, and I booked Jamal for the show and some of the teens in his program. We got to talking afterwards, and, and he told me that he wanted to host a travel show, and I told him that he was the, already the busiest person I knew, so that <laughs> probably wasn't going to work out. Yeah. Um, but I pitched him the idea of doing a documentary about him and some of the kids in his program. And uh, kind of took off from there. Nice. It, it takes a community to heal the community. It, it reminds mm -hmm. me of kind of what's, I guess, uh, being very viral right now is uh, Dave Portnoy's Barstool Fund, where he's mm -hmm. saving small businesses and restaurants, and he's relying on small donations or donations from everyday people who's doing more than the government. 
and you know, I, I know about the, the history of Chicago and it, it can get very turbulent there. I've, I've never been personally, but just from what I've seen from documentaries that I've watched about Chicago, it can be um, a very uh, a city with that falls on hard times at times. So um, that's, mm -hmm. that's really great to hear about the organization and that it's really reaching out and helping people with the community. Uh, what in particular did you see that, that stood out with the organization over the four years that you shot this from, from beginning to end? Um, how did it grow and what did you notice was the most successful thing that the organization was doing? Yeah, I mean, when we started, Jamal was a one man band. I mean, he had his kind of like right hand man there, um, who's who's featured in the in the film a lot, Moni, um, and he had a one full time employee, his CFO, Cody, um, everyone else was either part time or was a volunteer. Um, and that took a toll on Jamal that um, pressure. And that workload took a toll on him um, in in a lot of different ways. And and um, but part of the film is showing the growing pains of of the organization. Um, you know, where once he could take money that he raised and used it to turn the heat back on in in one of his teens' houses, um, he couldn't do that anymore by the by the middle of filming it because that's not legal under you know the 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 laws of five hundred one c. 501c3s. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think the biggest change is the growth of the organization um, and the growth of Jamal as a leader. Um, now he has a lot more resources. And, you know, you mentioned the Barstool Fund. Yeah. Jamal over the summer raised a million dollars on his own for small Ooh. businesses. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and so, you know, he has a lot more resources now, which is awesome. Nice. But when when I say that, I mean like he has like six employees instead of one. So he still needs help and he still needs the volunteers, but he's in a much, much better place now. That's why I say it's his origin story. It's, it's, uh, it's how he came to be. For sure. It sounds like the organization is growing even from one to six, raising a yeah. million dollars. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's a hell of an accomplishment. So congratulations to him and for helping so many people, people helping yeah. people in the, in the city of Chicago. That's, that's a, a wonderful thing to see. And uh, now that the film was accepted into Slam Dan, so it'll attract some more audiences. So people will bring uh, it will bring awareness to the organization. So hopefully it will continue to grow as people talk about it. Like, yeah. like in this instance right now, where we're yeah. saying, hey, this organization is really growing and uh, it's it's succeeding and doing a lot of good for uh, for people out there in Chicago. Um, where can people go to check out uh, the organization? Like the website link and Instagram, uh, social media pages, things like that. Yeah, so um, the website is formyblock.org, F-O-R, myblock.org. And there you can go check out um, the history of the organization and, and you can buy t-shirts and hoodies, which directly help the teens that are a part of the program. Yeah. Um, and then on social media, you can either look for uh, my block, my hood, my city, um, M-B-M-H-M-C. You can just look for Jamal Cole, um, he's, sure. uh, he's, all they're all will be down below. You can find all those tags down below after we put the whole video together. So, and yeah. And the, and the film is at a tiny ripple film on Instagram and Twitter. And then it's a tiny ripple film.com. Got you. Got you. Very good. And, uh, is there anything in closing that you'd like to say to the slam dance organization for, uh, the official selection this year? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're super honored. We're really excited to be a part of the, the slam dance community and the slam dance family that that everyone keeps talking about and uh you know as much as i wish that we were in park city right now or yeah. in a few weeks um i think it's amazing what they've done um to bring the festival to as large an audience as possible and uh and that's great i mean you know you can't buy an individual ticket for our film you got to buy a full festival pass but that festival pass only costs 10 bucks so dollars for all the movies and there's yeah, so many good movies out there it's amazing i mean I, personally i'm very excited that people are going to watch my film but i'm like as excited to watch all the other ones as well yeah there's a lot of good stuff out there so definitely check out slam dance film festival ten dollars so many movies so much awesome awesome experiences that you can have and uh, you heard it here from jason and uh, you can check out the film with from the links below and uh, thank you for joining us today on the breeze and stay tuned for more interviews with official selections from this year's slam dance film festival jason thank you so much for joining us thanks for having me